Welcome to part two of Truth About the Go Keys 5, the Go Keys series. In the last video, I told you how crazy it was for Roland to do this. Now, it takes diving into the keyboard to realize that a lot of the higher end keyboards of 2000, 3000, 4000, 5000, 6000, they do not have some of the style taste that this has. This is one of the things that excites me, and I, I really want to go in on this. We got a very robust R&B section. Here's one of my favorites from R&B. Um, I'm just going to play a few of them. So this is Kawaii Hip Hop. Let's check this out. <music> the chord. Let's go back to one. Variations. Go to three. It just makes you want to jam. Four. Let's go to the intro. Check that out. I mean, this stuff sounds good. When you plug this into a computer, let's end it. And you've got short endings, long endings, short intros, long intros. And like I said, I'm really excited at the palette here. It's not just uh, rock or or jazz or standards you got a lot of the urban stuff that's missing from keyboards today and Roland gets it because they know that this keyboard the portability is going to appeal to the younger generation and then the styles the styles look at this dramatic hip-hop check this out <laughs> crazy <laughs> let's go to the next variation Let's go to two. Hear yeah, those strings? Come on now. You, you gotta, you gotta admit this keyboard packs a punch. This is just going into the phone. Just external speakers, not even in. And you know, I can actually feel the bass from the speakers here. Let's go to three.
anyone can spit bars to this. Yeah, let's end it. Sick, sick stuff. So my friends, for those of you who are into urban, R&B, hip hop, maybe you're a rapper, this keyboard immediately gives you a backdrop without any effort. It is totally ridiculous. Now, on top of what I showed you, I could change the chords if I wanted. I could turn that off. And when I go into the arranger to play that same beat, that dramatic hip hop, I can change the chords. So that's how that works. I mean, you have endless options. If you want to use the chord sequence as is, it's got ready chords for you, turn that on, boom, and off you go. It's also got a list of progressions, so you don't have to be confined to one progression. I mean, it's got a lot of chordal progressions. I mean, this is so well thought of because what they have done here, they've considered people who are not musically literate, who do not know what a D minor seventh is from an E minor seventh, but they allowed to play with so many chord combinations across keys. And we have 300 of these preset chord pattern list. I've not seen this on any other keyboard. That's why when I tell you this is a market disruptor, you gotta listen to what I'm saying because I get excited not just at the sound, but at the disruption, I like the disruption because it gives the other players a run for their money. You know, there's this misnomer that, oh, the big fish is it. The big 4K, 5K keyboards bring in the bacon for these companies. But it's actually not. Can you imagine millions of people wanting to buy this keyboard and then you exit by three or however many hundred they're probably making on each one? When you, when you really... Check out the material, the workmanship. It's plastic. And you heard me criticize plastic in the past, right? For the higher end $4,000 keyboards, $5,000 keyboards. I, yeah, I have a problem with that. Why do I need to pay the same for the same material times 10? Because in my mind, materials are important. But what they've done, the design, very slick. Round buttons. They've taken away the angular edge. For those of you who understand design and aesthetics, Steve Jobs was obsessed with, you know, the squares and rectangles with rounded edges. Well, just look at the beauty. The volume control is oval. It's not, it's not by accident. These are good design choices. The speakers have round, round holes. 